Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games Little Time. My name is Joachim and today we'll be playing Obsession. I'm not showing you the box because you've already seen it in the intro so no reason to and also just has a bunch of stuff in there uh, after setup. So um, welcome to Derbyshire or Derbyshire. I think Derbyshire um, in England I imagine and uh, we are all part you and I, of the family York, the York family. Um, we are known for uh, our domestic, domestic staff. They're exceptional. So we start the game with an extra footman. So what do you do actually in um, Obsession? <laughs> well, in Obsession, you're a family uh, in England and you're trying to raise your stature. You're trying to become more respected. And one way to do that is by marrying through uh, courtship. And uh, we're very interested in these two people, in uh, Charles Fairchild Esquire or Miss Elizabeth Fairchild. Those two people we want to impress. Now, as you can see on the uh, turn board here, uh, we have round board, I guess I should say. We have the uh, one, two, three, four courtships where we will try to convince them to join our house. We can still win if they don't join our house, but they do give a bunch of points. You can see the top right corner, eight points. And uh, they are quite powerful uh, people because they give a lot of rewards. Now, I'm not going to go through a super lengthy uh, explanation of the rules. Um, I might eventually do a how to play, but then it will be a lot more... Uh, zoomed in and detailed and so on than what I'm doing right now. This is just a playthrough. Um, but a very quick explanation is here you have the buildings that are part of our country estate and we are basically improving it so more people, more and more people are impressed by it and want to come and visit it and we can host parties and events and so on. For example, we have the private study, the butler's room, the main gazebo, the front parlor and the bowling green. Now, during your turn, uh, you're going to host an activity. For example, I'll do the main gazebo, all right? Then you put it here in the activity and you can see that requires a footman, a white guy. So you put it here and then what does, what that, the, what, blah, 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 blah. what that means is that two gentry can be invited. Now gentry basically are just people, all right? Uh, you have a deck here of the uh, level ones they're basically normal ones and level two these are the prestige ones the important people now you start with four people already in your hand of your family for example here honorable marian waters honorable alan waters beatrice uh, viscountess york and george viscount york so basically these four are part of the york family you can see their crest and their y referring to York, and also the points in the top right corner, one, two, two, and three, and also what they give us. So at this point, we can choose two gentry. It can be family, but it can also be from the other decks that we will acquire uh, during the game. So in this case, two gentry, very broad. I can just, for example, take these two, okay? Uh, or I'll take these two first. They are easier to explain. For example, uh, Beatrice, Viscountess York. So she can either throw away a person so let's say i no longer like marion waters i can throw her out of the game because of the bottom one you can see a trash bin now i'm not going to throw this one out but there are cards in there that give you negative victory points um you can use them throughout the game and it's fine but you want to get rid of them by the end of the game so then that's useful or she will allow you oh yeah or she'll allow you to draw two level ones and you pick one okay so it goes to your hand this one very simple george gives us money you know, he collects tenants. Uh, he, he collects rents, not collect tenants. <laughs> he collects the rents, the rent from the tenants. So he gets 200 pounds. One advantage of all the family members, as you can see in the bottom left corner, is they do not require anyone to help them. You can see they're crossed out. While with the Fairchilds here, for example, he requires a green guy. Um, I keep forgetting what the names are of the um, people. Green guy is the valet, right, the valet. So he requires a valet and she requires a handmaiden, is it? A lady's maid. Uh, Played too much love letter, I guess. A lady's maid. So we have the lady's maid 
we have the valet, we have the footman, and then these two guys are special guys, they're the under butlers, they'll come out later. We also have her, she is the housekeeper, but she can also function as a lady's maid, and then we have the butler, who can also not function as anything else, he's just the butler. Um, okay, so, basically, uh, these are the people. So we choose two people and they give us the rewards. What does Marianne Waters do? She allows us to draw one of these or if she's going out with a level two man, she will also give us two reputation. These are the lions. So reputation will go up here. That's important because you can see our buildings are all one, 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 one. And at this point, also, our family doesn't have a number, but there are people in there with a number and you can never invite people whose number is higher than uh, what we see here. So if, I have, if I'm level one, I cannot use the North Dining Room. I cannot use Heritage Guest Suites. I can use the Retirement Room. I can still buy it, but I cannot host an activity there. Uh, I guess we're just all going like, duh, nobody wants to come. So basically two people, uh, who else is there? Oh yeah, here, uh, our good friend, Alan. He is the family heir, so he chooses one favor, either 100 pounds or one reputation. So he chooses two people. So let's say we choose these two, right? And put one person there. You don't have to put anyone there, that's fine. Then at the end, we will enjoy the favors, which of course is $200, $100, so $300, and we get a level two in our hand, and then it is done. The only thing that's, done, that's left is then we could use our acquired money to buy one of these uh, houses or improvements, so to speak, okay? So for example, these three, uh, these are, well, these two, you don't have to put anyone on there. These are ongoing effects. This one, you can place a footman there to uh, get the bonus. These three will just also go here and you'll be able to do it. Now, one thing that's cool is let's say we finish, right? At the end of it, uh, he will be expended. That's not so cool, but this will flip because as you can see this means it's a starting building none of these have that and also it's minus two points but after you've done the activity it's like it's upgraded it's still a main gazebo it's still afternoon tea but now it has a rose which means in the future you never have to flip it again and from now on you can look at two cards and take one if you do the activity again and it's two points from now on you just put it back and from now on it will never be flipped again you can still use it there but yeah won't be flipped again and that uh, applies to everything but uh some of them will drastically change i think the bowling green has 300 i think if you flip it it's 200 yeah so the money goes down um also some activities have a higher or, or different uh, requirement for example here you need to use the oh my goodness i've forgotten again uh the housekeeper. I'm just going to put it here. So every time I have to refer to it, I can at least le read it. Uh, this requires a housekeeper and two ladies. Once again, can be family members. Here is the butler and nothing happens if you use this. You just hire two servants from the supply here. You cannot hire the uh, uh, under butlers. Uh, a building might come out that allow us to uh, acquire him. He can be any man. So he can be a footman or a valet. And then here, another butler, village fair planning requires two family members. Now this tile is super popular because if you build this, that means you plan for the village fair. And then whenever there's a village fair, so village fair, village fair, oh, well, there's only two here. In the extended version, there's three. Uh, you get 300 pounds and two reputation. So that's always very good to have. Okay, I think that's like roughly the way the game goes. Um, after you've invited people, they go to the discard and the only way to get them is to pass. And when you pass, you basically, basically do no activities um, and uh, you do still get to buy from the market. You also have the option to reset the market. Um, but passing, it always feels very painful, but at the same time, very cool because suddenly if you've had a lot of guests, they all come back to your hand and it's like, awesome. Anyway, so another thing that's important in the game is that you have these objective cards, these five cards in my case, okay? These will guide you a little bit, but then every time we have a courtship phase, you can throw out some objective cards that you don't like and uh, replace them by, by new ones. Also, when we reach an objective card point, you will draw two new ones as well, which only happens once in the shorter form. Um, 
And then the only thing that rests uh, that I have to explain is, of course, a solo mode, but also courtship. Now we're playing with closed courtship, but if you play the normal game with other people, then you, most likely you'll play open courtship and you will flip one of these cards. And one of these cards has either essentials, service, estate, prestige, or sporting on them. And that means once we reach courtship, we will add the value of that uh part of the of the estate and then whoever has highest will win and then one of these two will go into your deck and you will get a victory point card if two people or more tie you just get a victory point card and the fair childs go absolutely nowhere so this will happen three times and the fourth time you will just add up the total points of everything on everyone's uh board and then see who get who gets to hire them last and you still get the bonuses as well then so yeah, I think that covers just about everything. Um, the solo mode then, how exactly does that? Oh, and also at the beginning of the game, you start with uh, two random uh, starter uh, visitors. For example, we have uh, Miss Caroline West. Miss West's fortune comes from trade and she has managed it shrewdly. So basically she has a lot of money. So she gives a hundred pounds, but you do need to use a lady's maid to take care of her, but she gives you zero points. And then we've got Miss Constance Stuckey. She has zero points as well. The kind and sociable Miss Stuckey hails from Bakewell and is a sought after whist partner. So she likes to play games like her already. This would allow me to get an extra person. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Endless Winter, which is weird to say. But in Endless Winter, when you have your turn, you can use a lot of cards. But if you don't get new cards, it might hinder you in a later turn as you have nothing to play. And then you might have to pass as well. The same goes here. If you have like a steady income of cards, you can avoid passing for as long as possible. Um, but then on the other hand, if you have some really good cards in your discard deck, you might want to pass anyway. I guess we'll see. All right. So... We have that. So how does the solitaire mode work? Well, it's actually quite simple. We're playing against Bolain, which is a beginner family, and they already have 85 points. <laughs> That's their set score. They will get some extra points near the end of the game. Because see here, season one, two, and three, these refer to the courtship. So these are the points they have after each season, according to their estate. So if I want to win purple, for example, I would have to make sure I have two or more. But of course, since we're doing closed courtship, these cards will only be revealed when we reach courtship. So I have no idea what it was. There's also no way to do a sneak peek. Um, and every turn, when is, this, when is the uh, solitaire player's turn, I'm going to roll a die, a, a d20, to see what they do. Uh, it also has a big effect on, for, for example, the monuments, if there's a monument here. At the moment, there is not. There's three in here. There's not many because there's a ton of tiles in here. Um, and if I roll, for example, five, so five to seven, position two would be purchased by the uh, AI. Uh, if it, there's a monument, it would just purchase the monument. If they roll very high, like natural 20, it's going to be uh, refreshed. If it's 16 to 19, there's no purchase. Okay. And then, but then the next roll would be minus five to increase the chance that they do purchase. So there's a uh, dynamic AI, AI, AI card here that's actually, that I shouldn't have put here. This is from the upstairs downstairs expansion. Uh, I can play with that later. I'm just gonna do this, uh, not that. Okay, so I think that's just kind of it. Um, we know what the AI is going to do. So the courtship is, a, is the same as in the base game. If there is a, a tie, then we will both get a victory point. If they win the courtship, they'll get the victory point and the person. At the end as well, same, th same idea. And if we do tie at the end of the game, then I win all ties. Um, that is endgame scoring, not just this one, but just endgame scoring. If we tie the last part with this, then uh, we both still get a victory point. Uh, that's not different. Okay, so, and then there's some rule exceptions, uh, but that's not really important at this point. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think we can start. Uh, I think we should, because it's only been 20 minutes. Uh, well, after editing, it'll be less. So, okay, first of all, let me take a look at my... Um, objectives so there's a ladies group here a conservat conservatory flower room music room all required 
Now, none of these are available. So at this point, this is not a very good objective card. Now I'm gonna put it here, right? Just uh, so we have, so uh, as an overview. Um, then we have a gentleman's group, billiards room, kennels, and cabinets of curiosities, also not available at this point. Have three valets. That should be quite easy because they're not gonna hire. So I should be able to get that. Uh, tennis court, cricket field, and croquet lawn, the sporting group, is also not available at this point. And the Epicurean group, breakfast room and north dining room. Now that one is here. Of course, it's super expensive and I have no money at the moment. So what I'm going to do to uh, start off is also tell you what these tiles do. The carriage house is pretty good because you can place a footman and then you can actually influence the amount of people. Uh, for example, this is two family. If you put a footman there, of course, after acquiring it, then you can turn it into three family or one family. So you can actually change the amount required, uh, which can be uh, significant because sometimes you don't have enough people and then it's good to lower it by one. Sometimes you have so many cards after a passing that you can do a huge turn. Groundskeeping is also quite good because for every estate action that you do during the game, you get one reputation. And reputation can give you a ton of points at the end of the game. Uh, then we have certain servants' quarters. I really like that as well. Because after you've finished an activity, all the people you've used go to here. And then, then at the start of the new round, they go here, but you still can't use them. And at the start of the next round, they'll finally move there again. But with the servant quarters, you can always use one person from here, which also makes it easier to assign them, of course. Then retiring room gives you one uh, experience, uh, it requires one lady, but it's minus 200. So the 600 will cost 400. This 400 minus 100 is 300 as well. 500 plus 100 is 600. The heritage guest, heritage guest Suite is one casual guest. Casual is basically the level ones and it doubles all the favors, which of course, if you look at uh, my relative, where is he? If we use our uh, good friend George, suddenly he will give us 400 pounds instead of 200. That's quite interesting. And in the North Dining Room, you uh, need the housekeeper but then you can use five people to put there so that's also pretty huge you can have a pretty nice turn after that okay um i think that is uh good enough we can finally start okay so we need the north dining room but that's not going to happen anytime soon i think i'll get the barn or the carriage house i don't know which one yet but i do need money for that also, I have no idea which theme is going to come out. Um, but I do see the private study becomes zero after I build it, right? Yeah, so that's why it's zero. Um, so at the moment, I actually win this. But then I basically sacrifice 300 pounds into reputation, which I don't really want to do. Butler's room uh, is zero. It's also zero. If I build it, it will become one. So that will automatically win it. Uh, the main gazebo is minus two. If I build it, I probably win it as well. Yeah, that's two. The front parlor is minus two, but they have two, so that would tie it. And the bowling green is minus three. If you build it, it's two. So I don't know how on earth they managed to get minus four. Maybe they took a tile that adds more minus. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, since my goal is to get the North Dining Room, so I need to buy some stuff to get it lower. Um, I mean, I could refresh the Builders Market for four reputation, but I don't even have that, so... Um, I'm going to choo, 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 do the private study and get 200 pounds. And uh, we're gonna get 300 pounds, basically, for these two. Uh, oh, it's two family. I can't get her, but I can get the other one, right? Yeah, here. 300. Uh, Alan and George will get me 300 pounds. And also the butler goes there. So that's it. I will just get 300 pounds. Um, these are, well, not yet discarded, to be honest. They'll be discarded in a bit. So now I can buy from the market. So either I place a footman to change the requirement of the guests, or I get the barn. Um, the barn would get me two points here, which would set me up for the rest of the game, basically. 
it is beginner so the the Bolain super focuses on prestige and estate so i'm gonna have to get a state as well to battle it a little bit so i think the barn is a good idea so i'm gonna spend my hard-earned 300 pounds to get the barn and put it here then that's done so i clear my board so the butler goes here this is flipped over so now it's zero points so we tie but if we, if we reach, or when we reach Village Fair, it will give me 300 pounds and two reputation. These two are discarded. There we go. And uh, that's the end of my turn. So now the AI is going to roll and see, oh, wait, wait, this moves to the left. And then we draw a new tile. So let's see what comes out. It is a croquet lawn, which is good because we need that for our group sporting group bonus so but yeah maybe it'll get taken away by Bolain. we'll see so it's a standard turn we'll see what the result is it is six so for six position two uh so the service quarter quarters will be acquired by them um i'll just put it on top of here and uh, that's it as far as i know they only buy once yep they only buy once and uh, so this moves up and then we draw a tile. So now the North Dining Room is 200 pounds cheaper. Um, croquet Lawn is 500. Okay. And a Servant's Hall comes out. Place any servant to gossip about a local Derbyshire family. Steal one. Now, this is kind of useless, the Servant's Hall, I have to say. Because the... Well, it does give you one point. But the attack doesn't happen in a solo game. So the Servant's Hall is like, me, you know... I'll just ignore that to be honest all right so they move one step forward and then i can do it again um so I'll rotate service this moves forward and then i can do an activity now i think uh because of what bolain has here um at the moment i win a service i tie essentials i lose prestige i can i can basically flip two more I win Bowling Green. So basically, a state, a prestige has to be done, and a state. So I think I'll do two ladies first, because these are the two ladies I started with. Uh, yeah, I'll do the front parlor. So this requires the uh, <laughs> the housekeeper. I was going to say the underkeeper. So we're playing whist, which makes sense because Miss Constance Stucky also plays whist. All right. So she requires a maid, a lady's maid. There we go. So that's done. So she gives me 100 pounds. She gives me one person. And that person is... Whoa. Sir Angus Canning, BT. I don't know what BT means. He's a pauper. The aged destitute baronet is the stepbrother of the unfortunate 19th century PM. All right, so it gives me one reputation, but he cost me a hundred pounds. So it's basically useless. So you can see why you want to get rid of some people. All right, I don't want to use him ever. Thanks, Constance, for letting that person in my house potentially. Okay, so three reputation, one, two, three. At least that's good. All right, so that's done. Goes here, goes here. These two goes. Actually, I'm supposed to do that at the end because now I have to buy a building first. But I cannot buy a building anyway, so it doesn't matter. So this is flipped over. So now it is only two reputation, but you can add an extra lady. And it is two points, so I win that at the moment. No, we tie, sorry. Okay, let's see what they do. 11. Position 4. Oh, it buys the North Dining Room, of course. So this moves forward, and then we draw a new one. I guess now I don't have to worry about the money anymore. So the North Dining Room. Uh, we have the Smoking Room. Did I need the Smoking Room? No, I don't. At the moment, anyway. All right. So then we go to the next round, the Village Fair. So that gives me 300 pounds. Gives me some money to work with. And also two reputation, right? Yes. So one and two. So this flips to two. So now I could actually buy heritage guest suite and actually use it i could buy it anyway but i could actually use it so um with my newfound wealth uh the next round is courtship so once again 
at the moment I tie or win most of them but if I do bowling green then I will get 300 pounds and a bunch of people three two people or one and I get rid of the pauper <laughs> um, I think I'll hang on to the pop. Well, why would I hang on to him? Because I need more people. Yeah. Because he's he's actually useless. I do not want to pay him. Um, yeah, I'm going to do Bowling Green. Do I have enough people? Actually, I do have enough people. All right. Because I'm going to have to hire at one point. But I don't have my guy here, so it doesn't matter. So, two gentry. So, that will be Beatrice and uh, Marianne Waters that I'm going to use. So I think I'm just going to get rid of him anyway. Um, no, I'm not. No, I'm going to draw two people and choose one. Let's see. All right. At first, we have Sir Kenneth Crawley. Sir Kenneth has a passion for horses and is heir to a mod modest estate in the heart of Derbyshire. So two reputation and draw one person. This guy is really good, actually. And he's level two and I can host him, so it's fine. Then we have Theodore Lodge. With a sister who is notorious and a great shame to the family, <laughs> young Theodore is a study in propriety. Now, he doesn't require one, which is good, but he only gets me a new person, which is not good and zero points. So I'm going to keep Sir Kenneth, obviously. This guy is discarded. Put this card here. And then uh, it is Marion Waters who gets me another person. And it is Miss Catherine Eden. Miss Eden is engaged, engaged to marry the Honorable Robert Watson of Hopton. So 100 pounds and reputation. Nice. So these two go away. Um, this one goes down. I get 300 pounds. Oh, at the start of my turn, um, these were supposed to all go right. So actually, I did have a butler. So this one goes here to get it with him, right? Am I mixing it up? Oh, no, 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 no. Is that correct? I was mixing it up, yeah. So this is flipped over, and this goes here. There we go. Um, and then I could buy. Now, first of all, to make it a little bit clearer, this is 500. So I have 700. Now, even though I have 700, I can only buy one building. Uh, it's only during the builder's holiday that you can buy as much as you want. So, um, what shall I buy? Because buying also adds points. So. With 700, I could buy the croquet lawn, but I win that already. Um, there's nothing else that I actually need. Um, so zero is a tie. Blue, I win. Red is a tie, but I can't buy that anyway. So essentials is a tie. Prestige is a tie. So either prestige or essentials. So this or this one. I think I'll get the heritage suite, although it's only just one person times two. But if I put Sir Kenneth there, that's two people and four reputation. I think that's pretty good. Yes, I shall buy the Heritage Guest Suite for 500. There we go. All right. And then this moves forward. And then they roll. 10. They will buy position 3. Oh, but I should get a tile out first. But they're going to buy the croquet lawn. Of course, of course they buy the croquet lawn. What was I thinking? Not buying the one tile I need. <sighs> oh, it's a monument, actually. So they don't. They do number 10, monument, position 1. They buy the carriage house. So that's gone. So 1, 2, up, up, up. And a new one comes out. So the sculpture gardens, plus 400 pounds. It's really expensive. And the staff expansion. Oh, that's really nice. The butler's pantry. You gain an under butler who can be any man. So uh, then we have uh, the sculpture gar garden. Give, basically gives you one reputation every round. Okay. So that's done. Um, we then move into courtship. So dun, 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 dun. Now these are small cards. I know the expansion gave bigger cards, but I like playing with the small ones. So there you go. It is a state, of course, the one thing where we tie. So we both get a victory, po victory point card. So I'll put it here for them. And this is mine. Four points or 300 pounds. Now, I really love money. So I'm just going to discard it immediately and get 300 pounds. Maybe it's better to keep the victory points. It probably is. But I just I love money in this game. I cannot help it. 
Okay, and then I can get rid of victory uh, uh, objective cards to get new ones. Now, the Gentleman's group, nothing has come out. So this one's gonna go. The Epicurean group as well hasn't come out. Sporting group has been taken away a little. Oh, no, no, it's still there. So I'm gonna keep this one. The ladies' group, this is also, all these three are gonna go. So I get three new ones. So it is the English garden, hasn't come out yet. Three victory points per monument. So I'd rather, I'd like to have that monument. Thank you very much. And six points for three ladies' maids. And these two are easy to get, honestly, because they're never going to hire anyone. So, all right. And then we move on to the next round. Hup, fifth turn. Now, normally the first player token passes around, but the AI never starts. Uh, we always start. So, okay. Um, let's see. Okay, first they move here and this guy moves here. And then I get to see, of course, this guy will not be moved. I think I'll stick to what I was going to do and do the Heritage Guest Suite because he gives me a nice boost in reputation and allows me to get two people, which gives me more uh, options. Although getting the butler's room is also good to get the two people. Hmm. I could do Miss Eden. She gives me 200 pounds and two reputation. If I put her in the uh, heritage heritage guest suite, that wouldn't be bad. So let's see first. When it comes to essentials, I would win. When it comes to service, I would win. When it comes to estate, I would lose. When it comes to prestige, I would tie. And when it comes to sporting, I would tie. So the only estate there is, is a sculpture garden, which I don't have enough money for. And it's 200, I have 500 at the moment. So I could put Miss Catherine in the Heritage Guest Suite. Um, but I feel like I'm not really doing a lot with that. I kind of want money. So I kind of want to get the croquet lawn. Um, oh, These are difficult choices, man. The difficult choices, I'm, I'm telling you. Or I'll just do the main gazebo. Put both of them in there. And it gives me an extra reputation anyway. So it gave me four reputation anyway, and 100 pounds, and a person. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, we'll do the main gazebo. Up, put a uh, footman there, two gentry. Of course, they do require a lot of uh, help here. But they give me three reputation. One, two, three. They give me uh, 100 pounds. So I'll put 400 back and get a 500. So it puts me up to 600. And uh, one casual guest. Oh, no. Miss Anne Fairborn. Adventurous. Few speak openly against Anne, but there have been whispers of an indiscretion. Wait, she, she allows me to get one guest, but I lose one reputation. Oh, it's like two horrible people I have already. And then a level two, uh, so a respected guest so prestige guest level three that's actually interesting so i can use her quite quickly lady elizabeth hastings lady elizabeth a devoted traveler is the eldest spinster daughter of the wealthy earl hastings okay cool so these two go here this one goes here i have to buy first though um i have 600 i'll get the croquet lawn for 200 sounds like i'm playing jeopardy <laughs> uh so i get 300 back and uh, this one will then return and flip over. Okay, so that's two points now. So I tie again. This goes here. Um, and then these move forward and I draw a new one. And the new one that I draw is the state room. This requires a thousand pounds. Now, of course, the problem is with their turn now, if they roll one to seven, the monument is gone. So I hope they don't, but we'll see. 20, natural 20, refresh, great. They all go back in the bag. Okay, at least I was able to get the croquet lawn. Still need the tennis court and the cricket field. Now I think during a refresh, um, we have to look 
at the uh, numbers again. So we'll draw out six. So one, two, oh, the English garden, three. I need the English garden. Four, cabinet of curiosities. I used to need that. <laughs> Five, Gable Conservatory, and six. Wow, okay. Uh, so now we have to look at the numbers. So 85, 110, 40. I'm sure this is first. 85, 110, 115, 45, and 90. So 90 goes here. All right, looks pretty interesting, especially because I need the English garden, but at the moment that's 600 pounds. Um, so natural 20. So if no purchase, next turn minus five. So next turn we're gonna have to do minus five. So I'll put the die on five to uh, remind me that I have to do minus five. Uh, all right, we move forward. Objective card. So I get to, oh yeah, these, these uh, buildings that were removed, they go back in. Also, I forgot, but I don't think it happened. Normally from this courtship onwards, every service tile that comes out will go here. They will not clutter it up anymore. And in the next courtship, every level one tile will be put here. So, yeah. Anyway. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Objective cards. I draw two new ones. So, the Cabinet of Curiosities. Wow, it's right here. I'm going to need money. And flower room and any one garden required. I'll put it... Uh, I'll move this to the side. I'll put it here. Flower room and any one garden. Flower room used to be there, but it's also gone. Okay, so move to the right. I think this is a point where I will hire new people. Um, oh, because I did this, I got an extra... Did I give it to me? Uh, I didn't, because I did the main gazebo. All right, so I kind of want to hire, but I don't want to hire, because I feel like I'm, I'm wasting my time hiring even though it brings me closer to points i uh, i think because i only have one useful person so i guess it's the time for the heritage gets sweet because that would give me 600 pounds oh but i don't have level three yet i can't use her yet uh what am i gonna do so i need what do I need? The English garden is 600. I kind of need it to drop a little bit. I like the fence paddock because I can get rid of a guest. That's good. It's only 200, but it's minus two points though. That put me down to zero. What if you, what if I use it? Plus two. C3 take two. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go for the fenced paddock. So can I do something that will give me money? But if I use these two together, the reputation cancels each other out, but I still lose the 100 pounds. So if I do the croquet lawn, I'll end up getting 100 pounds and one person. That's it. Because of uh, annoying Sir Angus Canning. Huh. I could pass, but I don't want to pass yet. I need, I want to get more, I want to get better people. And I need reputation too. This is three ladies and possible. I think I'm going to do the croquet lawn anyway. Yeah. Uh, but what am I losing right now? Nothing. I'm losing nothing. Yeah, I'm losing nothing. I'm winning blue and the rest I'm just tying. Oh, I'm losing green actually. Okay, I'll do the croquet lawn. So I'll put this here. And then I use these two deadbeats. <laughs> so the reputation cancels each other out. That's fine. I do lose 100 pounds, but I gain 200 pounds. So in the end, I gain one, which puts me on 500. And I gain one person. Oh, it's another minus one. Lady Alison Thatcher, a pauper. Lady Alison is entirely without means, but has superb connections in London society. Okay, I get one of these, but I have to pay 200 pounds. Oh my goodness. 
It's not, I'm not, I'm not doing well. And these two go away. Yeah, go away. Go far, far away. Can I quickly? Yeah, sure. sure. So my wife came in and I have no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> um, I'm going to move this one down. They go here. Um, and this one goes here. Oh, this is the next round. This, okay, I've done that already. Okay. Flip this over to here. And then they'll see, I have to still have to buy and then they will buy. So I have now how much? 100, 200, I have 500. So I like the fence paddock, as I said, uh, I don't have enough to buy anything else. So I'll just pay $200 to get the fenced paddock. There we go. And then these all move forward. And then probably I will pass next round. With the fence panic, I do have a problem though, because now I'm at zero, so I lose estate. So I hope it's not estate. Hillside kennels. I used to need that, but I don't need it anymore. All right, so let's see what they buy. 11 minus five, right? Was So 11 minus six is five. So position two, the drawing room is gone. Boom. All right, help me go down. And a new one comes out. So the English garden is now doable. Our brushing room, so this immediately goes there. Footmen on staff are now trained to serve as valets when needed. It's pretty good actually later on. Cabinet of Curiosities is already here. So if the AI would get Cabinet of Curiosities, they get both tiles. So that is crazy. Ah, monument comes out again. All right. I did shuffle though. Okay, so uh, next round. So I moved them to the side already. So problem is I'm still not level three in, in reputation. I'm only level two. So the only person I can use is the annoying lady, lady Alison Thatcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass. And then when you pass, you do have, I have a flow chart here, which means refresh service. I've already done that. Reclaim back deck. So I get all my cards back. Observe round track, track event. There's no event to be observed. Monument or service hall, uh, no, nothing there either. And then collect 200 or refresh builder's market. I don't want to refresh it, so I want to get 200 pounds and I do get to buy. So I have 500 pounds I can spend. So I need the English garden, that's an instant five points. Um, aside from that, I don't need anything else, right? Mm, oh, the cabinet of curiosities I also need, but I can't afford that, 600. So I'm just going to get the English garden for 400. Really sounds like Jeopardy. Um, and that actually brings me back up to two points, which ties me. So that's nice. And then they all move forward. And also oh, everything is refreshed because of the passing, actually. Um, so yeah, that is done. And then the AI, of course, rules to s rolls to see which one they take and they do the monument turn so one to one to seven is a monument and the retiring room comes out 16. so no purchase but that means there will be minus five subtracted next round and we have courtship so we flip this over boom 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 prestige so i have two they have to we both get a victory point victory card so it's three or that. I have no idea what that means. It says here, builder's holiday. So I can use that to build as much as I can. Now, I don't want to use it for now. So I'll just put it here, face up. Is it actually in the camera shot? It is. All right. Um, I'll just put it here when I want to use it. Uh, although later on, I might zoom in and you don't see it. Just remember that I have. I you know what? I'll put it here. There we go. Okay. So remove and oh wait first i can get rid of two uh cards that i don't potentially want so i've this fixed this one already this one is done so i'm just gonna put it like this okay and the other ones uh, can go there so getting the monument is going to be very difficult so i don't know if i should keep this the servant bonus i can still get it if i go for it uh flower room and any other garden i already have one garden so i just need the flower room to come out so i guess we'll wait for that cabin of curiosity is right there i don't want to get rid of it i think i should get rid of one here but do i have 
the majority of men are ladies. So at the moment I need three or well, four ladies made. So I'm definitely going to need this one. So I'm going to get rid of the valets and I'm going to get rid of the monuments. If I have them, great, but chances are low because of the increased monument chance, especially with the minus five. Okay, one victory point for each prestige guests. So no family. So these and two valets and two ladies maids required. Okay, right. Okay, that's still doable. Okay. So then we move on and it's the village fair. So I get 300 pounds and two reputations. So I can finally use my special guest. So one, two and goes to level three. There we go. So now I can actually use lady, 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 lady Elizabeth Hastings with her 300 pounds. Okay. So next season oh and the level ones go away so retiring room goes here and a new one is drawn so retiring room is now 100 pounds only but it's not very good to be honest the green room and the green room is a little bit special you can see this is different that means if i use it as an activity it will flip over to this one and then if i use it again it'll flip over again so depending on what i need it for i can actually use it to swap uh, different themes. Okay, so theme-wise, I don't know if I'm doing that good because theme-wise at the end of the game, she is having 19 points. At the moment, I have four. So I'm in a bit of a pickle. Um, so I need to have stuff like that. I do have 400 pounds now. And if I do the... English garden, I can do, I can have three ladies. For example, I could have her, um, Catherine, which is another hundred pounds. And then, but I don't have enough ladies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my butler to hire the ladies. Um, but then they're not going to come out immediately anyway. So, but then I have 500 pounds to spend on a cabinet of curiosities. Okay, that's what I'll do. Yeah, I'll, I'll use the butler's room. Hup, put the butler on it and then hire two servers for supply. I'm going to get two ladies because I'm going to be needing them because I have so many ladies already. So they go there. Then he goes here. Well, first I buy and I'm going to spend 500 pounds. Oh, I have 400 pounds only. Ah, oh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Mm. Okay, then I'm going to spend 100 pounds on either the retiring room or the brushing room. Um, I'm going to spend it on the retiring room. There we go. Because if I use it, it'll give me points anyway. So that's done. Um, and then he goes here. This is flipped, so it's now worth one point. That gives me three points. So I, if this comes out, I win it, no matter what. Um, okay, so that's all done. These, uh, then they roll to see what happens. Eight minus five is three. So, of course, they take the monument, which is horrible for me. Okay, although we're not playing the challenging mode, right? So, if the if you play the challenging mode, it says add all the VPs for all monuments scavenged by the AI to the base score. So normally you don't do that. Okay. Well, staff expansion, gain an under butler for 400 pounds. It's good if it comes out earlier, I feel. And here's the West Terrace. I don't need the West Terrace. Okay. Um, now the servant bonus is already done as well. So I can put this here, it's fine. Um, okay, moving forward, and now the time has come for the English. No, not yet. They're here. I can't use them yet. Uh, how about the fenced paddock? I can get rid of a guest. I get a guest, um, and the state will go up, which is necessary. Okay, so then I could get if I do fenced paddock, I can get two gentry. So I'll just go for whoever gives me money, basically. 
for example, him. And um, I want to keep my lady. So I'd want to have a guy who gives me money. Okay, my family member then. So these two, so we do the fenced paddock. Goes here. I can dismiss one guest. Of course, it's going to be one of the ones that give me minus points, like uh, Miss Anne Fairborn, minus two. Bye bye, Anne. So, actually, this goes here, of course. And um, these two are free to use. So, I get to draw a casual guest. Oh my goodness, I get rid of a minus two and I get a minus three. Okay, cat, sorry, okay, Sir Bentley Churchill. Cad. Sir Bentley lacks all the propriety of his father, pursues ladies with abandon, and is quite wealthy. So, okay, he gives 300 pounds, but you lose two reputation. Uh, don't like it. No, I don't. But I do get 300 pounds. That's something. Uh, actually, I'm not going to get the 100. I'm going to get a 200 and one reputation because the cabinet curiosity curiosities is only 500. So I'm going to spend all my money to get the cabinet. All right, so then he comes down and this is flipped. So now I have six here, which would tie, and I have six there, which makes me win that one. And five, I also win, three, I win, one, I lose. But I still have the Builder's Holiday. Alright, and then they roll. Twelve. Position four is the Hillside Kennels. Okay, up, up. Next one. To come out is Lionheart Suites. Okay. Now, these two go away. These all move forward. This one moves here because we go to the next round. It's the builder's holiday, but it doesn't matter to me because uh, uh, no way I have that much money. I do want to do the cabinets of curiosities, curiosities because oh, but I can't. It's a level five. Never mind. See, my, my reputation really has to go up. This is four and five. But the only thing that gives me reputation is a front parlor, but I've already used it. Is there a lady who gives me a lot of reputation? Well, my special lady, right? No, she gives me 300 pounds, so no. I don't think there's anyone that exceptional. No. That's the only place that gives me reputation. I can get a music room. It's a little bit easier to, but it's still level four. So I need to do something where I can get a lot of people out and, um, get some stuff like I'm using losing this right but what does a one turns into a two I still lose so I hope it's not essentials there's everything else I win uh Cabinet curiosity is done so I can go away mm, flower room and any garden still no flower room uh, guests I would just try to get as many people out as possible but I can only get up to because the, the reputation is killing me right now. I guess I have to do the front parlor again, just for the reputation. So hop, I can get all the ladies out at least. So I'll use a special one for 300 pounds. And then ladies that give me a lot of reputation would be nice. No reputation, no reputation. I, I don't think I have any ladies with reputation. Oh, I have one. She gives me one reputation. So even if I do this, oh, it does get me to level four. Okay, cool. So these three, so you can see why I hired the ladies maids because they're all used up now. So they give me 400 pounds, which is nice because at least I'll be able to buy something. And um, one reputation plus two, so three. One, two, three, so it becomes four. Okay, uh, I'll do this in a second. Then I can buy something. Now I can just spend 100 for a brushing room. Because um, most of the stuff here I don't need. 
Oh, I cheated. I paid 500 for cabinet. I was supposed to pay 600. So I'll go down one experience because I chose the experience on this guy instead of 100. So I'm still not at level four. That's annoying. <laughs> but I cheated, so I don't want to cheat. Um, so now I have 400 still. I guess I'm going to buy the music room because it's three gentry and I can actually use that next round. So 400 pounds, music room here. And they all come back. Uh, this stays flipped over. So I already have nine points here, so it's pretty good. These three go away. And uh, we'll see what, oh yeah, we move forward and then we'll see what the AI scores. So the only points that the AI gets, stock lake. Oh wow, nice. The only AI that the that the only points that the AI gets at the end of the game is um, the eight points of the Fairchild. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Um, just the VP cards and their black score and eight points if applicable if they get the person they get eight points and the 85 and the victory point cards so that's what happens with them all right so let's see what they roll 10 without a monument so position three they take the green room too bad because i thought that was interesting so they don't get all these points okay they just take it away to make it more difficult for me i guess fenced paddock goes here which of course is not interesting for me because i have it already and you cannot have two of the same Hillside candles come out again, okay? All right, so that's done. This round is done. We move into courtship and we'll see what the last one is. Dun, dun, dun. Service, which is good news for me because I have three and she has two. So I win a victory point card and that gives me five points or I can get a person. Now I can throw it away and just get a valet and then I have the five points anyway, without having to do a turn to get it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it away, get a valet. He goes here. Um, actually, rotate service was supposed to happen already. So it's like this. And he goes here. Um, yeah, so then this is done. All right. And then I can use him anyway. And then um, I can also get rid of victory point... Uh, Objective cards if I want to. I think I'll get rid of this one. And maybe the group bonus as well, because the chances of the other ones coming out is a bit low. I'll just get rid of this one, because it's only for level two guests and I have one at the moment. So, yeah. State room. That used to be here, but it's gone now. Yeah, too bad. That's it. Um, oh yeah, and also get to choose a person and I think I'll have to go for normally I go for her but I think I'll go for him this time just for the reputation because I really need to boost my reputation like a lot so I'll take him and then we move forward next round um, yeah so rotate service again I guess wait so normally they would have moved uh, now. So this one goes here. So when the courtship happens, they're not supposed to move. So they move afterwards. So they did this now. Um, and then we check what happens here, which is nothing. It's just in regular round. And then I can do the activity again. I'm still level three, which of course is annoying. But now we have the Fairchild guy who I want to use. He'll give me three respect. Um, I think we'll do the... But he's not a casual guest, so I can't use the Heritage, heritage Guest Suite. Um, I can oh, send him to the Croquet Lawn. If I have somebody else, maybe a guy. Yeah, I can, I can send him and Sir Kenneth to the Croquet Lawn for 300 pounds and five respect and a person. So I think that's pretty good. 
because it'll get me a lot of respect and that's what I'm here for. But I cannot do it because I have two people here. Um, that's annoying. I think I forgot to give me one respect here for the fence paddock, but it is what it is. I'm not sure. So I can't do that. I don't have two greens. I'm still waiting for a green one. So I guess Sir Kenneth cannot be used. Is it just two gentry for the fence paddock? Yeah. Oh, for the it's just two, two. So it can be a woman as well. Maybe I should use a family member. Oh, actually, perfectly perfect. It'll be a date. It'll be a date between Marianne Waters and. Charles Fairchild, Fairchild Esquire, the nephew and dashing heir to the Fairchild fortune is the most desirable bachelor in Derbyshire. So here, and they're going to play croquet. Up. So I get 300 pounds, first and foremost. Then I get five experience, uh, five re reputation because he is a male prestige guest. So five. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're up to four, finally, and almost at five. And I draw a regular casual guest. Minus two, of course. Why are all these? I shuffled like crazy, okay? Roger Viscount Benton holds an ancient title, but rumors of the poor treatment of young ladies follow him. Great. Wow. Okay. That's fun. Um, so this goes, well, not yet. I can buy first. I have 300. Um, we're in season, well, it's the finale, right? So at the moment, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 15, 16, 18. Bolain has 10, 19, 21. So I definitely need to do something there. Uh, but flipping them will be good enough already. So I think I don't have to worry about anything. Um, so I could actually have 300 pounds. I'm going to get the footman for 100. I mean, not the footman, but the brushing room. So basically footman can now be valets, which would have helped me this round, but yeah. So these two go here. The croquet long goes back. They go this card. And, um, uh, then they roll. 16. No purchase, so minus five for next round. I actually was hoping they, they would purchase, so it, you know they move on a bit. All right, uh, national holiday. So actually, I can use anything I want now. Uh, doesn't matter the requirements. Of course, I'm going to use the cabinet of curiosities because my highest level. But first, everything moves to the right. I use a footman, and then I can use two gentry of any level. But I mean, I can use all my gentries anyway. Uh, so that doesn't really matter much. I'm just doing it for the reputation, which is huge. Um, I can use Sir Kenneth because it's just too gentry. And then um, I can also get... Maybe I'll use the annoying guy I just pulled because he'll give me 300 pounds. It'll take away two, two reputation, but he'll give me 300 pounds, which allows me to have 500 pounds which I can then save up for buying something more expensive, I guess. Uh, maybe I'm not going to use them. I need exp uh, reputation, so I don't have much reputation. It's so annoying, these people. <laughs> these people are really annoying. Okay, I'm going to use her so I can throw someone away. All right, so. Is that one, All right? Two people. These are the ones that I choose. He goes here. All right, so I get six, seven, eight reputation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there we go. So one, two, this one's five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is actually six. Yeah. We're level six now. Good, 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 good. Um, and then I also get one casual guest. Please don't be minus. Ah, good. Sir Thomas Ralphs. The gregarious Sir Thomas is clumsy and rather naive, but his society is adored. 
Nice. One reputation, 100 pounds. I like him. Um, and then I can throw away someone. Of course, the one with the highest minus points, which should be Sir Bentley Churchill. Um, yeah, for sure. What an annoying guy. Okay, so these two go here. They go there. This one flips over. And now it gives me seven points. So that's 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22. So that takes care of the final course ship. That's already done. All right, let's see. I only have 200 pounds, so I can obviously not buy anything. But I could buy the fence paddock, but I already have it, right? So I can't buy it at all. No, so they roll minus five and it's six. So position one. They buy the gabled conservatory. Well, I like it, so everything becomes cheaper. We're almost done. It's going to be the final round now. Carriage house. We already saw that, but then it was removed. So you can place a footman to increase or decrease the people. All right, and then this goes down, this goes here, and then the last round, actually, that this goes up. Last round. So I'm level six now. So basically I should just flip the music room that goes from three to six or the English garden that goes from two to five. So basically the same effect. Um, state room, not available. The tennis courts and all that kind of stuff, not available. Flower room and anyone garden, not available. So my objectives are moot. It doesn't help me. Um, I could try to get as much money as I can, but most of these people don't give me money. Um, I guess I'll just do the music room, as I said. That requires the butler and three gentry. Um, there's no way to get rid of anyone anymore. So the minus points are here to stay. Of course, I will use Sir Thomas Ralphs for one more reputation. I will use Sir Angus Canning for one more reputation. And is there anybody else who gives me a reputation? No. Oh, but I get four anyway. So it'll be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, but I don't reach it. So I don't need to use him because he's not useful anyway. Um, oh. Point is, all these are kind of annoying. Um, I can use her because she doesn't do much wrong. So then I need a third person. Well, I guess I'll take him. He'll decrease my reputation, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I can use him because of my special brushing room. Okay, so four reputation, five reputation, back to four reputation. So one, two, three, four. So I go up to level seven. And then I also get 100 pounds for my efforts and I get two people. So two casual ones. So I actually get more minus if I'm really unlucky. Okay, one point, the dashing, okay. Captain Henry Fitzgray, the dashing Derby native is known for his valor storming the Taku forts in the second opium war. He's really good. Reputation and 100 pounds. And then, oh, minus two. Coralie Porter, American heiress. Miss Porter is a daughter of a Texas ran rancher and a glamorous Sardinian singer. Minus three rotation with 600 pounds though, but minus two, oh my God. Just the minus points. Okay, so that kind of backfired. So these go here. Well, eventually. And I can use 300 pounds to buy something, but I can't buy anything. However, I can spend two, I can't spend rotation, no, because I'll go down to level six, it's not worth it. No, 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 no. Um, because you can spend reputation for certain actions, two for 100 pounds, three reputations for re refreshing one servant, four reputations for re replenishing this. But yeah, no, with my 300 pounds, um, I cannot get anything, uh, basically. Nope, okay. So in that case, these three go away. And then we uh, flip this one over. So that becomes six points. Nice. 
And then it's there, last turn to roll. It's nine. Um, and that is position three. So they buy the Lionheart Suite. And then this goes forward. And a new one comes out. And that is the flower room, which is, of course, is too late now. Okay. And I think that is the end of the uh, scoring. So let's see. Uh, we have to add all this up and then see who has the most points. But I already did it, actually. But it's... Okay, let's do it anyway. It is 10 plus 9 is 19 plus 2 is 21. For me, it's 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 19, 25. So I win. I get a victory point card. It's 3 reputation or 4 points. Um, I actually have to check. Because if you're playing the, the short version, 7 is already max. Okay, never mind. So that really doesn't matter. I should keep it for the points then. Okay. I'll get to end game scoring in a bit. Uh, and I also can choose a person. I'll just keep the guy in here uh, because he went on a date anyway, right? So I guess the date went really well. There's some really nice croquet they played. So that is the end of the game then. Um, but actually, actually, no, no, no. I am not going to choose him. I'm not going to choose him. For the simple fact that I can still get the bonuses. So his bonus, his three experience, doesn't makes no difference for me. His reputation. So I'll take her because she gives me two experience, which makes no difference because it's maxed. And also gives me a level two prestige. So it could be points here as well. Three points, thanks to Thomas, Earl of Kellynch. The Earl is an avid sportsman traveling from estate to estate to hunt and ride. His points, it's important. Okay, so now we can do end game scoring. And for that, I need a pen. Okay, so first of all, you can tell I've played before with my wife and my wife uh, destroyed me. So the first time we played, we didn't play 100% correctly and I won 197 to 187. Second time we played, we played more correctly. The only thing we didn't do was get rid of objective cards during courtship because we had no idea what the trash can meant. It's not in the rule book. So I had to look up look it up in the on uh, Board Game Geek. But she trashed me 214 to 116. Um, my objective cards were only 20, no, 20 points. Yeah, hers were 60. So I'm just going to blame that those 40 point differential on the fact that I lost by more than by almost more than 100. Um, okay, so anyway, let's see how I do now. Let's do this is the AI. And the AI has 85 plus seven so 92 so normally i should beat that because i've always scored more than 92 but i've never played it 100 percent correctly which i've done now as far as i know so i am joachim and i'm playing york so let's see let's check the scores these buildings they don't matter they're irrelevant so first of all improvement tile vp so one two four five seven nine eleven thirteen twenty twenty six twenty eight thirty one thirty one then gentry vp so i just add all the people i have plus and minus so three eleven ten eight <laughs> nine seven nine 10, 11, 13, 15, 18 points. It's not, well, I guess, yeah, it's not that good. I guess it's average if I look at the other scores. Lower average. Um, no, it's just low. Okay, subtotal. So at the moment I have 49, so I'm about halfway, more than halfway. Objective and milestones VP. I didn't do any milestones, I didn't put it in the game, so just objectives. So two valets and two maids, yes, so five points. Cabinet of Curiosities, yes, so 10 points. Uh, three servants, yes, so 16 points. English Garden, yes, so 21 points. These three, no. So my objectives gave me 21 points, which is poor compared to the rest, again. 
reputation VP. So um, I'm getting there is maximum is 28 points. So adding all that together is 8, 1, 5, 7, 98. So I've already won <laughs> after that. But we still have a service VP, two points per servant. So uh, I think that's any servant, right? Yeah, servant VP. Yeah. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 18 points. And then wealth, 1 VP per 200 pounds. So I just won. So that's 16, 17, so 7. That's 10, so that's 11. 117 for now. And then VP cards. I have two, which is seven. So I still, I win, which is nice. 124 against 92. But uh, I think my wife would have still destroyed me. So I think I probably didn't play that well. But <laughs> okay, I'm happy with the win. I'll take it. Uh, and they said, what is it for the advanced version? You would add the monument points. Um, add the VPs for all monuments scavenged by the AI to the base score, in addition to courtship VP cards and fair ch child card VP, if any. So they did get one monument, right? They get one or two? One. So if I had played with the challenging uh, mode, they would have had 10 points extra. They would have had 102. But I still would, want, would have won against the beginner. Yay for me. Okay, well, I think that was cool. I mean, I enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I like this game a lot. The fact they have to think and and, and have to uh, make sure you have the the right people for the people and the, for the guests and the guests that come out can really annoy you. Like the minus points that I I mean I drew so many minus points and I threw out minus five points. Um, yeah, hmm, it's. Uh, it's a cool game, I have to say. Uh, I want to try the other solo version as well, and then I'll do a, a full-fledged review, is what I'm because I want to play it a little bit more still. Um, I do feel there was probably a little bit of a luck of the draw thing, uh, but then you could mitigate that uh, by having all these buildings that you know C three take two, C two take one. Although I do think that you're always more inclined to use buildings that you haven't flipped over yet. Definitely the case with me. But then you could argue, okay, but the English Garden, it hasn't been flipped over yet, and it's also C2 take one. That's true. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a gamble. Um, now, I did draw a lot of minus cards, but there's not that many in the deck. Okay, minus, 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 positive, 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 minus, minus. Minus, minus. There's a fair amount of, I think the casual ones, right? Minus three, minus, well, there's even one minus four. My goodness. Oh, that's used to attack people. So you lower other people's reputation. Minus three is also attack, yeah. I guess you could remove these if you don't want to want to do the attack stuff, but it's, I guess it's kind of like gossiping, right? But are there any negatives here? I don't remember there being any negatives. No, because the difficulty here is sometimes they're level, like this one, level six. She's obviously really good, but then you need, they need, she needs a lot of help and you need to have level six, of course. So that's obviously a lot more difficult. No, no negatives here. No. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, it was fun. It was nice. Uh, next time, I guess I should move on to something more difficult. And here is the dynamic AI. And I think this is more like a 1 to 8 value tile. You're go they're going to try to get the most... Uh, I mean, this is a hierarchy, right? They're going to go for the top ones first, and the second, the third, and the fourth, and so on. And always take the least expensive tile of that kind, I guess. Um, yeah, so I guess that's cool as well. Uh, good way to try it. But I want to try the estate one. Then the estate one, you don't play against the solitary opponents, I think, but you're just trying to build up your building. But it's different rules. Has also also has a different board. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to stop here. I'll leave the rest for a real review and so on. But I like this game a lot.
solo and even if my wife completely destroys me she's allowed to <laughs> all right cool that's it uh, my name is joachim this was summer games all the time and i'll see you next time bye bye